Hello everyone, Matt from Model Minutes here and welcome back to the workbench for another unboxing. This week I'm taking a look at the brand new 172nd scale Lockheed Martin F-35B Lightning II from Airfix. So join me as I take a look inside the box and see what this one is like. So starting off on the front of the box then we can see that this is a starter set. So we have some paints, it says up here we've got poly cement, two paint brushes and six acrylic paints included. Down here we've got an image of the model kit with a display stand. So that indicates to me that there's going to be a display stand included and we've got an item code of A55010. Over here we've got 8 plus, so Airfix recommends this kit to those aged 8 years and older. On the short edges of the box we have the same information as on the front, and on this longer edge here we have a contact information for Hornby Hobbies, some other information in different languages, and a logo here which says that the transfers are made by Cartograph. A small note here, it does say that some of this was made in India and other parts in the UK, so that's interesting to see. One thing that I am enjoying at the moment that Airfix are including on their uh, kits are the model design and tooling dates of 2023. So this is a recent one because it is currently 2023 whilst I'm making this video. And the decal scheme and pack design 2023. So it's all brand new, it's all straight off the press so to speak. And I love that Airfix are putting that information on the kit. I think it's very important that model manufacturers be as transparent as possible and put their tooling and uh, design dates on their kits so we know what we're getting from looking at the box. Just quickly before we go on to the back, we have on the top here information about the actual uh, F-35B. We've got some information here. It says the length of the kit is 215 millimeters. The wingspan is 147 and there are 42 pieces. And this is the actual size the model will be when it's complete. So it will be one of my larger 172nd scale fighter aircraft that I'll have built to date when I get around to doing this one. Over here, we've got one flying hour, which is a token. If you cut it out and keep, then you can redeem them for more kits if you're a member of the Airfix Club. If you're not a member of the club, unfortunately, you can't redeem them. However, do save them up because you might be able to pass them on to someone else or alternatively send them to Models for Heroes, which is a charity which will convert them into kits for their charity work. Down here, we've got our skill level, which indicates it's a skill level one. So it should be one of the easier kits to build in the Airfix range. This kit, I am under the impression, has been designed to be a starter set. So it should be easy to build. When it came to me in the post, this header card was folded up like this. So unfortunately there is a crease mark along the back here, but that's nothing that's going to detract from being able to read the actual paint instructions. And it is worth noting as well that the paints are no longer stuck to the top of the header card here. I think there was a problem with the older style uh, starter sets where people were effectively taking those and just leaving the rest of the kit. Now everything is contained within inside the body of the set itself. So starting off down the bottom here on the back, we've got some warnings in different languages, and then we've got our painting and decal placement instructions. So we can see here that this is a Lockheed Martin F-35B Lightning II of 617 Squadron, Royal Air Force on HMS Queen Elizabeth in 2021. And we've got a logo here and some information about Lockheed Martin. There are, by the looks of it, one, two, three, four, five, six paints, which would make sense because that's what it said on the front. A black, a white, a gunmetal gray, and then three different kinds of gray to finish our plane because modern aircraft like to be the sort of same color as the sky, nice and gray. Especially if you live in the UK, you'll know what I'm talking about. Decals wise then, doesn't look like there's that many and the color call out on here makes it quite easy to see where everything should go. So without any further ado, let's get inside the box. Unlike previous starter sets, these are not glued shut, they are instead taped shut, which makes it easy to get into, a little bit more friendly and everything 
comes out. So as always, let's look at the paperwork first. The first thing we've got here is a handy starter set information sheet. So if you remember, I looked at the Spitfire Mark V starter set, which is the first time I saw this. This is a really helpful information sheet if this is your first time, because it gives you some information on other tools that you might want to use. Washing your parts, looking for the parts on the different frames, cutting them, drilling, gluing, where to put glue, painting small parts, mixing your paint, and how to do the transfers. So this is a very helpful information sheet, and it's lo lovely to see that inside the kit. Up next, then we have our actual instructions, which are printed in an A4 booklet. I'm just looking for the transfers, so I can put them to one side, he says, not able to find them. And my transfers. No, no transfers in here. Well, well, well. Well, it would seem that the quality assurance gremlins have crept in at the Airfix factory again because I don't seem to have the decals at all. I've just looked back in the box. I don't have them there. I've unfold. They're usually inside the... Um, inside the uh, the instructions but i've just been through all the, all the pages and i can't find them i'm just going to quickly look on the floor um, in case they fell out whilst i wasn't paying attention they're not there they're not in the bag of parts that i can see they've been fairly obvious well isn't that interesting um i guess i will be sending an email to airfix and depending on when i make this video uh, we'll have a reply or not but that's disappointing. So we'll just carry on. We'll cover that off in a minute. So on the front of the instructions, we've got some information as before on the box um, about the actual uh, F35 and then some assembly instructions down here. Then moving on, we've got our different frames, which are all numbered as a sprue map effectively. And it tells you where your different parts are going to be, which is really good to see. And the uh, instructions are sort of printed in color, which is nice. And then moving on, we've got a key to the different instructions and symbols that we're going to see during the build. And we start off by assembling our models. So you can see that we need to cut various parts away, glue in the yellow areas. We assemble the internal areas of our F35. The top and the lower surfaces are mated. Then we can add our pilot seats. There's a decal, if you have them, for your control panel. And there are also the... Uh, tail fins that go on there. Now we've got options. If we want to do it flying, oh yeah, so we can have it pure flight, forward motion, we can have, we need to go to certain steps. If however you want to have it in hover mode, you need to follow different steps. So whilst this is a starter set and it's designed for the beginners, you do have to be able to follow the instructions because otherwise you're going to skip a few steps and maybe miss out some parts. So it is important to make sure you read the instructions as you're going through. So moving on down, it looks like we make up our engine exhausts, glue them into the model. Moving on, we have various panels which need to be glued into place. I presume that is to close up the landing gear bays. So this is, this is the landing gear raised, as you can see there. It's telling us to raise, uh, if you want these raised, these are steps for this. Moving on, add in your panels for the fan, add your pilot. And then we've got some information about the cockpit. So we don't glue the cockpit in. I think it will snap fit, which means that um, in the past, I've done it myself, the poly cement will fog up the clear part and you don't want that to happen. So they designed the kit just so that it'll be snapped into place, which is quite nice. You can use PVA or glue like that, which doesn't react with the plastic um, if you want it more permanent. So here it's saying add your transfers at this stage. Um, and we've also got our display stand. So you can glue it on to the display stand if you want to, or you don't have to if you don't want to. And then these are the steps for having it in hover mode. Unsure what I want to do with mine, whether I want to have it in hover mode or have it in full flight. Hover mode does look a little bit more interesting. A few more steps for that. And you can have your landing gear down as well. So it's it does give you quite a few options with that, but you need to pick before you start which one you're going to do because you, once you've 
assembled it in a certain way, you then can't go back and change it. For example, the um, the nozzle doesn't pivot like it does in real life. I know in the old days, um, they made them so that they could pivot or swivel. These are set in one format or another. Moving on, landing gear, paint up your landing gear. Add in some more panels if you're having it open for the hover. And again, add your canopy. So you just need to make sure you take your time to read your instructions. And that's that kit complete. So that is the instructions. We'll have a quick look at the contents of this bag. In this bag are our paints. Let's check to make sure we've got all six because I'm already thinking that I'm missing something else. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we should have, as it indicated on the back of our box, 33 there, 50, sorry, 34 there, 53 there, 165, 164. We should have two lots of 164. There we go. So these aren't different colour greys, like I said before. They're slightly, look slightly different, but they're not. They're 164 twice. So you've got two lots of the same paint. And I'm going to have a quick look. This is the old style pot with the flappy lid. Usually the paint inside there is absolutely fine. But these are the new style pots. And there was a slight design issue with these where they didn't quite seal correctly. And you can see that they've started to dry out. Um, that one is salvageable because it's still wet. Yeah, that one's still wet itself. You can see it's it's dried out. It's going to need thinning down with some water or some acrylic paint thinner because that's not ready to go from the, straight from the pot. That one's turned into a paste, so it starts to dry out. So there was a design flaw with these um, paint pots where they don't seal quite correctly. They seal enough to stop paint coming out, but they don't seal enough to stop air getting in there and drying the paint out. They are aware, humble are aware. See, 53 is fine. That's good. They're still wet. Um, they are aware of the issue, but obviously because they've already manufactured so many of these small pots, um, I think we need to wait until all the pots are gone before they start to give us new... That one looks a bit dry. I mean, there's bubbles on the top, but I think it's dry underneath. But yeah, so this old style one, yes, that's fine. That's perfect because the old style pot worked perfectly fine. Well, the new style ones they don't quite work so well if you do have any issues with your paints and they are dry and you you don't know how to rescue them then just send an email to customer services uh, to get them sorted out then we have our tube glue which um standard standard humble poly cement my lid has glued itself on i can take it off but um just be aware of that mine was glued itself on this excess glue um seeped around the outside there just be aware of that. From a quality control point of view, that's not fantastic. And it did say that we should have two paintbrushes. And I can't find them. I don't know where, where they are. I haven't dropped them. They're not in this bag. So I'm missing two paintbrushes and my sheet of decals, which is very disappointing. Um, anyway, so let's move on. Inside the plastic bag, we have all of our parts. Unlike the other kits that we get from Airfix, these are not on a frame. Normally all the parts come together on a frame, whereas these aren't. These are sort of semi-loose. This is a bit reminiscent of old um, kits. So what have we got? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. On the plus a clear part which is in the bag so let's look at the clear part first there we go clear part absolutely beautiful um some slight waviness there on the plastic but generally pretty good and no flash that i can see and the molded details so the canopy frames are pretty good i'd be tempted to mask this up but yeah it looks all right and then the grey, very grey plastic, it feels very greasy. It feels oily um, and smooth, which is a little bit annoying because you're going to need to make sure that you've fully washed this to remove any mould release, um, which is left over from the moulding process to get them out of the machines. 
um, and maybe even a spray primer might help to help the paint stick because these acrylic paints I, I imagine if people build these and they straight off the bat without doing any prep work to the kit um, the paint's just going to sort of pull up and run off the plastic because it is it just feel quite it feels like it's been polished you know when you've got that new polished feel and your hands are a bit um, slippery so on this sprue here we've got our display stand and a air intake fan by the looks of it or possibly the fan from the top i wasn't really paying that much attention um, it's it is a part we have our lower surfaces again a little bit greasy plastic is a little bit it feels a little brittle but it's it's okay it's not too dense it's quite light um, and the molded detail is all of the recessed nature it's quite nice it's very crisp there's no flash that i can see it's very nice we have our smaller parts here we've got a very nicely detailed pilot figure i love it when they include pilot figures it means that we can have our our planes flying and the details on here are pretty good Naturally, it was designed to be a starter set, so it will have potentially some more simplified details. The details that are there are really quite nice. No flash again to speak of. Moving on to this, we've got all loads of panels, gear covers, pipe work there. Even this here, even this has got crisp zigzags on it. That's really nice. And I saw some rivet detail if we flip over. Yep, so on the inside of, I think these are the gear bays, we can see some nice rivet detail there. And then into the nose, and we've got our tail surfaces here. Yep, again, quite nicely detailed. Despite the fact that it's a starter set, it looks really nice. Oh, I've got a bit here which has fallen off one of the sprues, so I best put that back in the bag and make sure I don't lose it. And then finally, the upper surface. So we've got some uh, excess plastic here, which all you need to do is just remove them, sand that down a little bit smoother. And yeah, it looks quite nice. The details on that are pretty good. It will make quite a nice model to build. To be honest, I think the color that they've chosen here isn't too far off of the um, paint color. So if you didn't want to paint this one, just stick your decals on, just assemble it, glue it all together, stick your decals on, put it on the stand, then you, you could probably do that because that's not far off the uh, the color that the aircraft will end up being in real life. So yeah, that's that's an option as well if you're not too fussed about painting it. So yeah, let's wrap this one up. We have quite a number of parts on their frames. Details are pretty good. Plastic does feel a little bit greasy. Um, so I will need to wash the kits just to help the paint stick, possibly maybe give it a primer base as well. But the detail that's there and the part quality is absolutely excellent. One clear part, which looks absolutely beautiful. Some slightly strange waviness to the molding, but other than that, no flash and the details are good. We have six paints, which are of a varying quality. Some are a little bit drier than others. I think they're all usable at the moment, but if I wait any longer, they'll probably go dry. Um, so yeah, might not end up using these, might end up using something else. One tube of poly cement. There are better cements out there. This one has seemed to have glued itself together a little bit um, from some overspill. We had a very good set of instructions printed in color to make sure you don't get things in the wrong places and a helpful hints and tips sheet which is good because it's a starter set and i love that airfix are improving that all of which comes contained within this rather attractive box with some excellent artwork on the outside not to mention our painting and decal placement instructions on there i would like to give this kit full marks and say this is one of the best kits i've looked at this year being a brand new tool mold quality is excellent I'm sure it will build up fantastically. However, as I'm sure we've all noticed, I'm missing both paintbrushes and my sheet of decals. So I can't complete this kit at the moment. If I were a beginner and I didn't have any paintbrushes and I opened this up and go, where are my paintbrushes? That's, that's stopping you in the track, isn't it? And also not having transfers is just completely like inexcusable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to email um, Airfix 
and see if I get a response. And depending on how long they get a response, either this video will be released with or without it. So future Matt here, and it's been about four days. Yeah, four days. So I sent off my email to Airfix, and after a little bit of a confusing back and forth, um, in a nutshell, they didn't seem to have my information, even though I just gave them my order number. Um, but I had, we, we got there in the end. Um, so I have got a letter in the post. So hopefully in here, we have one set of decals and two paintbrushes. So yeah, four days later, and we've got the things that we wanted. So it does show that the FX Spares team do their jobs. So the two paintbrushes I've been sent them, I'm not entirely sure if these are the paintbrushes that were meant to be in there, or if they've just given me any random two, but you can see that I've got a size zero. Um, the head on that one has sort of split a little bit. I'm sure when I put some water on that, I might be able to get it to go back together. And then we've got a size four, and that one looks okay as well, but obviously it'll need the, um, I think they put wax or something on the nibs to um, stop them from bending. So we've got our two paint brushes so we can now paint our kit and we have our decal sheet as well. So let's get that one out of this little bag. It's quite good that they stapled it to this, well sticky taped it to this bit of card because that means it's not going to bend in the post. So we'll get that open and have a quick look. As mentioned these are cartograph decals and it's not a very big sheet at the end of the day. So we've got top left, we have our control panel transfers, and then we've got all of the other various gray RAF stencils as well. And the printing on that is absolutely fantastic. Cartograph are some of the best decal manufacturers out there. So it's, you know, absolutely brilliant that they include them. They are a little bit more expensive than the older decal styles that Airfix used to use which does ultimately push the prices up. But yeah, these look absolutely fantastic. The, 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 the text on here is completely legible. If you I wonder how close my camera can focus, uh, that's probably about it. Um, yeah, it's picking it up all right. So it's just like danger fan intake. So yeah, all that remains to be seen is how well these apply to the model. So well done Airfix for actually sending out these replacement parts. Um, so I guess back to me in the past, over to you. But yeah, so let's talk about this kit then. So this kit, tooling, dates from 2023, which is the year that I'm making this video. So this is a brand new introduction to the Airfix range. It has been included as part of a gift set with a Lancaster bomber, I believe, on their website. But ultimately, it's designed to be a starter set, so it will have the build quality of a starter set. It's got simplified parts and the fit should be quite good. Paint scheme is not overly complicated either, being pretty much one colour. At the time of making this video, this kit was retailing for £19.99 on the Airfix website, which is a relatively good price for a starter set of this size. £20 is not necessarily pocket money kind of kit, but it's something that you could save up for um, having got some basic modelling skills from the smaller starter sets like the Spitfire in the range. However, given the quality control issues such as missing those two paintbrushes and those decals, I couldn't wholeheartedly say that £20 for an incomplete model is, is right. It, it's, um, it's a bit subpar. It's not very often I have issues with the quality control from Airfix, but sadly it has um, reared its head today. So yeah, let me know down in the comments what you thought of my unboxing and if my assessment was fair. Quick shout out to my patrons and channel members for the extra support they give my channel. Massive thanks to these guys on screen. And if you'd like to join them, take a look at the links in the description. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe with notifications turned on so you never miss a modeling upload. And if you enjoyed this one, dropping a like would be greatly appreciated. Finally, the last thing to say is a massive thank you to you for watching this one, and I'll see you on the workbench again next time.